A few months ago, I made a video about selenium and copper oxide rectifiers, and I'll put a link to it right here. And um, in that video, I was talking about the, the different types of metal rectifiers that existed before we had the selenium and I mean before we had silicon and germanium rectifiers we had the selenium and copper oxide and I put them on curve tracers but I won't be putting any of these on curve tracers but they're still noteworthy to talk about first of all this one right here is a three-phase rectifier you see there's one two three input phases and then the two outputs looks like yeah there's red so this these two are the positive output and these two are negative output and this other this other big monstrosity back here you can see how it's it's actually damaged this came out of that thing right down there big old battery car battery charger and I think that's actually rated for 100 amps. Oh, 100 amps at 6 volts or 60 amps at 12 volts. So, this thing, and apparently this thing was damaged at some point. I don't know why or don't know how, but you can see that it's just totally fried here. This is the, this is the, looks like it's made of brass, the brass, um, plate that's put on top of the selenium coating here just to dissipate the current you know so you don't get a whole lot of current concentrated right around the bolt here it gets spread out for this amount of area on the brass and then from there it gets spread out on the on the metalized coating on top of the selenium throughout the whole area of the plate here and you can kind of see the border the border of the uh, selenium and the metallization is right there, very near to the edge of the plate. But all the other plates are intact. There's a, there's a good one. That's what it should look like. Then we got this beast right here. This is just two individual plates, but you can see how they, again, they put the, the brass uh, washer right here to spread out the current to a certain extent and then the current gets further spread out on the metallized coating and they because it's so large I had to have two of these brass spreaders I guess I could call them and the reason it's so large it's 12 inches by 4 inches the reason it's so large is because it would have been used for very high current applications anywhere from 50 to 100 amps per plate um, could have that's that's what this could have been used for but of course nowadays you just use a little well, relatively large but still little compared to this diode about yay big if you want to have 100 amps going through any kind of rectifier but then of course you still need heat sinking I mean one advantage of this is that it doesn't need any additional heat sinking it, the, the sheer size of it serves as its own heat sink. Other things we have here, just another, another pair of selenium plates really disassembled already. I think it's actually missing a few plates, but we have that. Then there's these two little full wave bridge rectifiers. I think I got these from my grandfather. He used these on his model railroad. There's this one right here. These are four individual stacks. So this was probably in a full wave bridge rectifier configuration, but um, but for a higher voltage. So you could get um, maybe 60 volts, 60, 70, 80 volts out of this thing. Here's some others. Let me dump this out. Got some more stacks of single diodes with or each diode is a multi stack here there's another full wave bridge another full wave bridge with individual um, plates just a whole bunch of little selenium rectifiers here it's all selenium 
There's this little contraption here. I don't mean it's a very specific application for this one, but I don't know what that is, but it's they made it somehow. There's also little bitty bitty tiny one here. I must have got this out of a out of an AC voltmeter that used a regular a, it was actually had a DC coil in it but in order to measure AC they hooked it up to a little full wave bridge rectifier here just very tiny little plates because of course you don't need very much current going through any kind of voltmeter and then there's these Again, we got some little selenium plates inside here. These are vacuum tube rectifier solid state replacements. But of course, if you made one of these now, you wouldn't use the selenium, you just have regular silicon diodes. Speaking of silicon, got a whole bunch of these full wave bridge rectifier silicon things. I must have I think I took these out of a bunch of power supplies and a whole nother box right here with all these different, it's all silicon in here. Got a nice little red one here with two diodes in it. Maybe this one is actually selenium, I'm not sure given its, its size. It might be selenium embedded inside the plastic. And there's other ones like this with individual diodes mounted on the terminals there. So that's all I got for now. I think I'll make another video where I actually put some of these larger rectifiers onto the curve tracer and see how they react given their, given their sheer size, see what kind of capacitive effects they have on, uh, on their on the AC circuit, on the AC current. See you later. By the way, I found one more little, little tiny selenium stack here. Again, probably took it out of a AC voltmeter with a DC coil. Look at that, isn't that cute?